Hi, I'm Severio from Honor Plugins, and uh, today uh, I make uh, sh this video to show you our new Total EQ. Uh, you don't have uh, the picture of me talking because we are in the lockdown period here in Italy, and uh, I'm talking to you from uh, our own uh, house, and uh, we don't have um, the camera and all the stuff to take a proper video but uh, I will try to explain you how this new plugin works. What, I will, what I'm showing you is uh, the latest, very latest version that um, it will be available soon and uh, it's uh, a total EQ, it's a, a part of graphical EQ like I like to say and it's uh, a very versatile EQ that can work uh, both as a, a digital pure EQ and uh, an analog uh, emulated EQ. What we have is uh, an input meter with uh, its own fader for, uh, um, for the input uh, level, where you have uh, the level of the fader down here, so you can go negative 30 dB and positive 15 dB. With a double click, you reset it to zero. Then we have in the middle the frequency chart of uh, our EQ, you will, when uh, you press play, you will see here the spectrum of the, of the signal and this yellow line is the final EQ um, results. Uh, as you probably have seen overing on the, on the chart, uh, you can see the level and uh, the frequency where, you, where your mouse pointer is at. On the right, we have the output meters and the output level that works exactly in the same way as the input one. Then, down here, we have our general controls. Uh, from right to left, we have the help button. When we press this button uh, on, uh, we can see, hovering over the control, a uh, pop-up that uh, explains you what the control does. The same goes for the EQ control points we are going to see later. Then, we have an equal loudness button. This means that when I press this on, both, me both uh, sliders turn off, and uh, the equalizer uses our CLMS technology, uh, the one of the plugins we already have for sale. And uh, this will mm, allow you to monitor the sound uh, using an equal loudness uh, procedure. That means that every change you make to the equalizer that may change perceived loudness will be compensated on the output so that you will always listen to the same loudness. Uh, this is very useful when monitoring, but uh, it's better to turn it off once you make your decisions because uh, uh, it's an adaptive uh, uh, system. So uh, for uh, very dynamic sounds or uh, dynamic equalizing, uh, uh, it may introduce some artifacts. So it's good for monitoring, but turn it off once you have taken your decisions. Then we have another uh, interesting button here, the Link I.O. button. It links input and output together. So if I turn it down the input, then the output turns up and the offset is true also. So um, how this, is, this can be useful? Well, since this plugin has an analog saturation engine inside of it, you may want to drive it very hard, giving it gain and gain. So the saturation distorts and uh, with this feature you can uh, have uh, automatically compensation automatic compensation for the gain you have given in the input so uh, you want to have a very loud output and uh, you can experiment with the various levels uh, keeping always a reasonable level on then we have a phase reversal button turn this on and the entire phase of the signal is uh, uh, inverse. Then we have the saturation engine that uh, is the same engine that from the, our analog stage plugin when you select the op-amp uh, model. Then we have the analog button that is completely new to our plugin because it's an advanced analog emulation not just the saturation but it also changes uh, the, um, the tolerances of the internal components, I can say this way, 
and uh, giving it uh, a little difference between left and right channel for stereo signal and also uh, giving uh, the filters uh, some kind of variance uh, according to the input level because uh, as you know analog is not precise so when you drive it very hard some components change its working point so uh, it's, uh, it becomes more alive uh, you will see that when I turn when I'll turn this on the um, curve will start moving because uh, uh, on high current uh, inputs um, the analog circuitry will start to react to that giving a more alive uh, sound a more depth and 3d sound uh, you, but you have to listen for yourself now uh, what I want to do is create a control point here uh, when I activate a control point, the maximum spectrum recorded by the plugin is shown. Since I have used this plugin before shutting this video, I already have some uh, input spectrum. And uh, what we see here is the control dot with all the controls around it. It's very handy configuration because uh, whenever you move this dot, you will always have the controls around it so you know uh, what to change without having to look around in the screen for the various controls. What we have here from left to right we have the saturation button turning this on will uh, turn on the saturation engine for this band each band can have its own saturation engine or a global saturation turned on. If I press this button every band is has the S turned on, so has the global saturation turned on. If I press this button off, every band goes off, and uh, I can individually select uh, the saturation engine for each band. Same goes for the analog emulation and the um, dynamic nature of the EQ. Uh, when I when the saturation uh, is active, I can select the amount of saturation. This actually reduces the headroom in the analog model, so uh, the input saturates, saturates earlier or uh, later, it depends on the level of the saturation amount. This, at 10 you get the more distortion out of the plugin, at, at 1 you get a virtual headroom of a negative 18 dBs, so it's uh, in the uh, digital analog standard. Uh, then we have the analog emulation and as I told you it turns on the differences between left and right channel if I turn it on it changes slightly the curve because of course we get component tolerance and uh, uh, the, the frequency is not exactly what we set the, the point at the gain is not exactly that gain the Q is wider narrower it depends on the tolerances so it becomes uh, a more alive system this is the, uh, the dynamic EQ mode. I make when I turn this on, I make this band dynamic. The curve changes with a, a field color, and uh, it will uh, show you the possible range of the um, of the dynamic equalizer, both negative and positive. And the threshold is automatic. That means that uh, the output of a uh, a comparison filter made by just this bell is compared to uh, the input of the signal and if uh, a spike is detected on the comparison filter if the comparison filter is much louder than the uh, average input then uh, we decide that there is a peak and the dynamic equalizer must act the um, level of action of the dynamic equalizer is proportional to this difference so uh, to mm, have it work you just have to drag it around up and down and uh, you will see the yellow line that moves in this area showing you the actual reduction or uh, gain that is taking place then we have here the shape of the, um, of the filter you can choose between a lot of shapes from low passes, high passes uh, bell filter, uh, low shelf, high shelf, band pass, notch and old pass filter. 
Then we have the frequency range here uh, that uh, will um, let you see at which frequency you have set your control dot and also let you adjust dragging it up and down and you can also type the exact frequency where you want your EQ and uh, at the right we have the gain level the same goes for the gain you can drag it up and down and uh, also set typing with a double click and then you have the Q slider here dragging this slider will allow you to enlarge or close down the, the bell or for other filters like the resonance H pass uh, H uh, high pass you can increase the resonance or for the low shelf and the high shelf you can change the slope of the filter itself and uh, now what we have to do is to have a listen to the plugin and let you see how the, the plugin works in action. I have a, a very easy um, track I made some time ago. There's no really no there's no sense in this track except for the demo, and it's a very bus EV track, so we'll have to fix that. This is a, a quick overview. You have seen that uh, the spectrum is displayed while playing. You can, you can see that while one of the points here is active, the peak spectrum is uh, shown in the, in the spectrum analyzer to let you decide which frequency needs your attention. And when you turn it off, you see no spectrum here and you see the real time spectrum both in input and output. And uh, now, I will let you hear the saturation and analog engine.
I have exaggerated the last EQ band to let you see how it uh, moves when the, the peaks are present. Uh, the analog engine shows you uh, and allows you to have a more live sound and uh, um, vibrant sound. So this is a Hornet Total EQ. Uh, you can uh, download the demo on our website and uh, have a try and let us uh, give your feedback. Let us know your feedback and um, if you want to buy it, it's just uh, 27.99 euro. And so we are improving it every with every update. We want to really create a cool product. Uh, but in the meantime, I think it's already a very good product to um, allow you to shape, correctly shape, both surgically and uh, um, acoustically. Uh, it gives you color also. So um, it's a very good cue in our opinion. Try it out and let us know if you like the plugin. Thank you very much for watching the video.